Bible part. The Promised Prophet of the Bible Part 4 Ishmael's Blessed Nation Abraham, peace be upon him, left of the land of Iraq heading to the blessed land, the land of Palestine. The Torah mentioned that he was seventy-five years old, and he had no children. He left after God had given him good news and said, And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 12 2 3 In the land of Palestine, Hagar, Sarah's servant, became pregnant with her son Ishmael, peace be upon him. The Torah mentions Sarah's jealousy of Hagar for having a child, while Sarah was deprived of children and offspring until that time. At that time, Sarah humiliated Hagar, and Hagar had to escape from her mistress and the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him, and he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. Genesis 16 11 to 12 The angel gave her good news of a great son who will dominate over everyone, but sometimes it will be the opposite of that, and he will be dominated by everyone. Hagar gave birth to her son Ishmael, peace be upon him, he was the eldest of Abraham's children Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram, Genesis 16 16. When Abraham, peace be upon him, turned 99, as the Torah tells us, God renewed his blessing on him I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. That I may make my covenant between me and you, and may I multiply you greatly, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. Genesis 17:1-8. When God tested Abraham, peace be upon him, by commanding him to sacrifice his only son at that time, Ishmael, they both accepted and obeyed the order of God. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. Genesis 22:1-17. Abraham, peace be upon him, asked God to make his son Ishmael righteous, and Abraham said to God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Genesis 17:18. God accepted his prayer, and told him that Ishmael would be blessed and so will another son God will give him. God had given him the good news of the birth of Isaac from his wife Sarah when God said, I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations, kings of peoples shall come from her dot and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. Genesis 17 16-20 Isaac, peace be upon him, was fourteen years younger than Ishmael. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Genesis 21 5 Abraham, peace be upon him, had other children from his wife Keturah, but God did not promise blessings for them. Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimron, Jikshon, Medan, Midian, Ishbok, and Shua. Genesis 25 2 Therefore, no prophets came from their children because they were not promised blessings. What is mentioned in the Torah in this regard agrees to a large extent with what the Quran says. The Quran indicates blessings and a covenant to Abraham for the righteous from his offspring from his two blessed sons Ishmael and Isaac. The Quran tells us that Allah tested Abraham, peace be upon him, by instructing him to fulfill commandments and obligations. Abraham obeyed, fulfilling the orders completely. Allah told his prophet Abraham that he would make his manners and behavior an example for people to follow. Abraham asked Allah to make also his descendants leaders who people would be guided by. Allah replied by saying that his promise to him of sacred leadership would not extend to the wrongdoers among his descendants. Al-Baqarah, 124. God mentioned the blessing of the two sons and that it was conditional on I am God Almighty, walk before me, and be blameless. Genesis, 17 1-2. There will be righteous people, who deserve rewards, and some will be wrong and they will get nothing from the covenant when he spoke about Ishmael. And I showered upon him and his son Isaac my special blessings and gave them both many bounties, from which one was an increase in offspring. There were those in their progeny who did good by obeying their Lord, and those who clearly wronged themselves by disbelief and committing sins. As Sophot, 113. This agrees with what comes in the Torah. When it indicates that the covenant and choice comes on the condition of good deeds, and the blessing that God gave to Abraham was because of his good deeds. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and will give to your offspring all these lands. And in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 26 4.
the blessings on Abraham's children continue according to that condition walk before me, and be blameless. That I may make my covenant between me and you, and may I multiply you greatly. Genesis, 17 1-2, and as he said about him and his blessed offspring, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have chosen him, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. So that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him, Genesis, 18 19 Therefore, obeying God's commands is the reason for this blessing, as God said to Abraham, And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice, Genesis, 22 18. According to this condition, the blessing and covenant were granted to the sons of Levi so shall you know that I have sent this command to you, that my covenant with Levi may stand. Says the Lord of hosts, my covenant with him was one of life of and peace, and I gave them to him. It was a covenant of fear, and he feared me. He stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and no wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and he turned many from iniquity. For the lips of priests should guard knowledge, and people should seek instruction from his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Malachi, 2 4-7. The blessing of God is for the righteous, and his curse is the unbeliever's share. God said to Moses, See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today. And the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way that I commanding you today. To go after other gods that you have not known, Deuteronomy, 11 26-28. Again, God said to Moses, You shall therefore be careful to do the commandments and the statutes and the rules that I command you today. And because you listen to these rules and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that he swore to your fathers, Deuteronomy, 7 11-13. See also Deuteronomy, 28 1-68. As such, the blessing of God is conditional on obeying him and following his religion. When the children of Israel drifted away from it, God showered them with curses and losses. Indeed, the blessing on Abraham started with his second son Isaac, but that does not mean that Ishmael had no share. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. Genesis 17:21. The Torah mentions that after Sarah weaned Isaac, Hagar immigrated with her son. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Genesis, 21 17-21. The Torah ignores Ishmael's privilege in the blessed water well, Zamzam, in Makkah, and indicates that the immigration story happened in Beer Sabah south of Palestine, where it calls it Paran wilderness. The Holy Bible has many geographical errors. These errors led Dr. Sabri Johara, as he summarized the opinion of the church, to say, God allowed the person, the scripture writer, to put in all of his feelings, experiences, emotions and his own beliefs in the text as long as that won't change the moral and religious meaning of the scripture. Therefore, the church acknowledged the Holy Bible's astronomical, geographical, historical, and geological inaccurate information. The book is supposed to teach religion and morals, and assist in reaching the path of righteousness and happiness. Differences between interpretations of the Holy Bible by Ahmad Abdul Wahab, 61-62, History of the Christian Ideology, by Priest Hannah Gerges al Khodari, Ph.D., 169-170. Regarding the promised blessing on Abraham's two sons, what was that blessing that God gave Isaac and Ishmael? It is with no doubt the blessing of the prophethood, the message and the dominion ordered by God and representing him. I granted the Israelites the Torah and deciding between people according to its rule, and I made most of the prophets amongst them from the children of Abraham, peace be upon him. And I provided them with different types of good things and I granted them virtue over the worlds in their era. al 16. The Jews and Christians consider that, the promise to Isaac is an eternal promise and that it will not be transferred to anyone but them. Saying, God said, No, but Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him, but I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. Genesis, 17 19-21 They understand that the word, forever, means that the covenant is for the children of Israel until the day of judgment. 
that it is unconditional and not related to the righteousness by following the commands of God. However, the word, forever, does not necessarily mean continuation until the day of judgment, but only means a period of time. The Torah uses this word several times and with the same meaning. In the book of Kings, therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. 2 Kings 5.27 Eternity is not meant here, otherwise we would see his offspring today as a large nation procreating and infected with leprosy. In the book of Chronicles, he said to me, It is Solomon your son who shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Chronicles 1 28.6 Their kingdom ended after about 2500 years at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar the Babylonian, so eternity here meant just a long period. The book of Deuteronomy times forever to be equal to ten generations. It says, Yes, he loved his people, all his holy ones were in his hand, so they followed in your steps, receiving direction from you. When Moses commanded us a law, as a possession for the assembly of Jacob. Deuteronomy 33-3-4, the eleventh generation of the Moabites was not deprived from the group of the Lord, and is not beyond eternity and judgment day. Similar to it, what Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, then Daniel said to the king, King, live forever. Daniel, 621, meaning live long. The blessing has been replaced with curses and expelling. God despised them and replaced them with others after they denied his law and now. O priests, this command is for you. If you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed them, because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your offspring, and spread dung on your faces. Malachi, 2 1-3 Based on that, we say that the covenant started with Isaac, peace be upon him. And is an eternal promise extended to further generations, which ended when God sent prophets to the children of Israel, sent books to them, supported them with his power, conquering the neighboring nations, and established for them a victorious kingdom for some time. Jews and Christians agree with Muslims that Isaac's, peace be upon him, blessing resulted in the prophethood, the kingdom, the book, the abundance and prevailing. But they considered that Ishmael's promise and blessing resulted in abundance only. Behold, I will rebuke your offspring, and spread dung on your faces, the dung of your offerings, and you shall be taken away with it. Genesis 17:20. This favoritism is against what comes in the scriptures. It does not favor neither in words nor in meaning between the blessed brothers. Hence, the blessing of Ishmael is the same as Isaac's blessing, prophethood, book, kingdom and abundance. When was this blessing implemented? When did all this happen to Ishmael? We say that this did not happen to him until our prophet, who is from Ishmael's offspring, was sent. It transformed his weak children and scattered tribes into a great kingdom that ruled the world. They had the prophethood in the book, implementing what God had promised Abraham and Hagar to their son Ishmael. If not, when did Ishmael's, peace be upon him, blessings happen? The blessing that the scripture mentioned about him, saying, And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Genesis 6:12, meaning that he will at one time win and dominate everyone and everyone will dominate him in another time. Arab Muslims dominated the nations by Muhammad, PBUH, and his nation. Before that, they were the most humiliated and the weakest among nations. They were the last to be blessed by God, because there cannot be blessings to atheist, unjust and cruel tribes who gather to worship idols. If we look at the old Hebrew scriptures, which talk about Ishmael, we find a passage concerning Gematria saying, As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly, mad mad. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. Lehuijadol, Genesis 17:20. the words, mad mad, and, Lehuijadol, are two symbols used in place of the prophet's name, PBUH. The word, mad mad, according to Gematria the Jews created a number for each letter. A equals 1, and B equals 2. And so on according to the alphabetical order, the 11th letter K is given the number 20, the letter L equals 30. While the 19th letter F is given the number 100, then S equals 200 and so on. Which concerns the Jews who use it in their books and prophecies is equal to 92, and likewise the word Lahwijad wall is equal to the word Muhammad. al Samaul, one of the Jewish rabbis who reverted to Islam, had mentioned this issue, and so did the guided rabbi Abdul Salam in his dissertation The Guiding Message. What came in the book of Genesis about the blessings amongst the Arabs had implemented in the prophethood and the kingdom that God gave to them. This is the main arguing point between us, and the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. It is the main introduction to the prophecies of the Holy Bible. Muslims believe that many of the Torah's verses, noticed by them, are prophecies about the Messenger Muhammad.
The Christians see many of these verses as prophecies of Jesus or other prophets of the Jews, and they refuse to extend them outside the children of Israel.